This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. You ain't a servant no more. Servanthood is over with. It is now time to enter into your sonship. The entire creation is waiting on you to declare that I am just like Jesus. I am a son of God. A joint heir with Christ. A joint heir with Christ. Omaha, Nebraska, are you ready for change? For one day only, experience three life-transforming sessions with Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar at the Change Experience 2019. This is perfect teaching. This is wholesome teaching. This is sound doctrine. This is good. This is freeing. Join us at the Hilton Omaha downtown on Friday, September 13th. Call, text, or go online to register today. Until you mature in, in, into your sonship, you're excluded from handling certain responsibilities. There are certain responsibilities you will not be included on if you're still immature child. Servants don't have this privilege. Only sons and daughters. You understand that? Let me show you something now. now. Now, I'm getting ready. Oh, my God, I'm getting ready to step on every religious bone that grandmama and them ever showed you. <laughs> Look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 through 29. Responsibilities you'll be excluded from still acting like a servant. When you have the privilege to be a son. Privilege to enter into your sonship. Now watch this. If you're there, say amen. amen. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ. Next verse. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs, according to the promise. So he said, you're heirs. Now that you're in Christ, those of you who are just identified, I've received Christ. Now that you're in Christ, you're heirs. Turn your name and say, hello, heir. <laughs> now we need to make a distinction between what kind of heir are you? Sunday, I close with this. There's a difference between an heir versus an heir apparent. An heir inherits right now. Somebody shout, right now. An heir inherits right now. An heir apparent will inherit one day. One day he will inherit, but not right now. He's an heir apparent. One day he will inherit. But when the scripture refers to us being heirs, he's not talking about us inheriting one day. The day you accept. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, let's go to Galatians 4 through 1. I, I, let's read a little bit more. Galatians 4 through 1. All right. Galatians 4, 1. Now watch this. Now this is important. Now I say that the heir as long as he is a child, 
So it's going to be important for us to, to understand what makes an heir a child. He differeth nothing from a servant. So an heir that's a child is on the same level as a servant. Though he be Lord of all, he's a child. Next verse, verse 2. He says, but, but he is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Verse 3. Mm. Even so, we, when we were children, now he's, he's, he's talking to Jewish people. When we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. He just said something. He said something the whole body of Christ missed for years. Listen to this. The word child in this verse of Scripture, in the Greek, it's translated unable to inherit. He's, 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 a, he's a baby infant. He's a minor. He's unable to inherit. But a mature son is ready to inherit. He's a full mature son. So in Galatians 4, verse 1 and 2, he's talking about the children of Israel when they were under the law. And under the law, they were infants not ready to inherit. Under the law, they were infants that were not ready to inherit until the time appointed by the Father when Jesus would come to bring all of us into sonship, bring all of us into full, mature sons ready to inherit. So what do you say right here? Go to the Amplified. Go to the Amplified. I want to read one through three in the Amplified. I'm getting ready to say this. This is so radical because, you know, what makes you a child? Look at what he says here. In verse 1, he says, Now what I mean is that as long as an inheritor, uh, an heir is a child and underage, he does not differ from a slave, although he's the master of all the estate. But he is under guardians and administrators or trustees until the date fixed by his father. Three. So we Jewish Christians also, when we were minors, were kept like slaves under the rules of the Hebrew ritual and subject to the elementary teachings of a system of external obser observations and regulations. What did he just describe? The law of Moses. Here we go. The law is for children. Grace is for sons. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What made them children when they were under the law? When you operate under the law of Moses, when you try to perform to try to get God to do something for you, when all of what you try to get to happen is based on your self-effort and not based on Jesus, you can't be trusted with certain responsibilities because you're operating by the law and you're a child under the law, an infant, a minor, no better than a servant because you're under the law. But Jesus appointed a time for, I mean, God appointed a time for Jesus to come. And when Jesus came, he came to deliver us from the law. Come on, let's read. read go, go back to uh, King James. Amplify. I got too many words in. Go back to King James. Uh, King James. Uh, uh, Galatians, uh, we left off uh, four. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, what? Made of a woman, made under the law. Now, why was Jesus made under the law? Next verse. Verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law. The word redeem means to, 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 to deliver, to, to pay the ransom from those who were under the law. That we might receive the adoption of sons. So Jesus came to deliver out of childness or childhood or babyhood by getting you out of the law and making available to you sonship. And he calls it the adoption of sons. Now, this word adoption is not like the one, it's not defined like we use it in our, in our, in our society, where you have a different blood adopting somebody else with a different blood. 
The word adoption in the Greek means adult son placing. Adult son placing. <laughs> Not adoption as taking someone else's child with the DNA different from the adopted parents, but we are actually born of God as new creations with God's very own DNA. So he delivered you out of the law, meaning out of the law you're no longer children, and delivered you into the adoption of sons, and the same DNA the son Jesus has, you are now in him, and you are now a full-grown, same DNA as Jesus and God, able to inherit the promises right now, R-A-T. Verse 6, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So here's, here's what confirms what has happened to you. When you are adopted, when you receive your sonship, the Holy Ghost begins to speak out of your heart, say, Daddy. He's no longer just God. He is your daddy. Yeah. Servants called him Jehovah. Servants called him God. You call him daddy. Cry out daddy. You can have a different expectation when you hear somebody say daddy instead of master. Servants sweat to serve, perform, and work hard to try to get the approval of their master. Sons and daughters wake up in the morning with no sweat, knowing that he will do what he promised because that's my dad. Amen. Servants lay hands hoping and a praying something might happen. But sons lay hand with the assurance that when I lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. This is a promise from my daddy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So until you receive your sonship, there'll always be the struggle of do I have a right to do this or to execute this authority or to operate this particular way because I'm just not quite sure if I have been accepted. Look at Romans chapter 8 verses 4 through 16. Romans chapter 8 verse 4 through 16. I'm telling you this year, if you walk in your sonship, the devil better pack his bags Hallelujah. and he better hurry up and get out because he, is, he, he, he will no longer be dealing with a servant who has the sweat to get something happen. That sweat is performing to try to get it happen. How many days do you have to fast before you can see power? How many days do you have to pray? How many hours you got to pray? See, we've been performing trying to, trying to earn God's goodness. And, and, and as a son, you don't work to get God's goodness. As a son, his goodness is what's supposed to be yours through relationship. But if the church has tried to convince you over and over again, no, 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 you're not that close to God. You're just a servant of the Lord. You're a servant. Who are you? I'm a servant of the Most High God. I never again, Mom. No, I am a son of God. I am a son. I am a, I am a, I am an, I am a son with the exact duplicate uh, that God, as Jesus is, so am What you saw on the earth when Jesus was here was a son walking around. Yeah. And the son of God became the son of man. When he took a body on, he became the son of man. Why did he become the son of man? So he can take the sons of men and show them how to be the sons of God. And he's done all of that. And you still walking around like Jephro and them, just like a, like a servant. You ain't a servant no more. Servanthood is over with. It is now time to enter into your sonship. The entire creation is waiting on you to declare that I am just like Jesus. I am a son of God, a joint heir with Christ, a 
joint heir with Christ. I speak to mountains and they're removed. When I pray, I get answers. When things need to happen, I don't beg God. I just rest and watch it come to pass. I can speak in tongues and pray in the spirit and he'll give birth to something that I needed to know. I don't, don't go around talking about what you don't know. Just know as a son, it's in there somewhere. As a son, you know when I pray in the Holy Ghost, he'll give light to that dark place. As a son, see, you got to know that. If you don't come to the place of understanding who you are, your identity, then there are going to be certain responsibilities that you will not be included in on because you have not accepted your sonship. You're still around playing church trying to be a servant. <laughs> servant. Look what he says in verse 14. Romans 8, 14. You know this one. For as many as are what? Led, led by the Spirit of God. They are? Because sons, sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Servants of God are led by the Ten Commandments. Mm. Servants of God going around talking about, well, is it, is it wrong to have wine? <laughs> Sons of God ask the Holy Ghost. Mm. Aren't you tired of sweating like a servant? When sons go to bed with air conditioning, Look at verse 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirits that we are children of God, specifically sons. Because this New Testament is all about the Holy Spirit. See, we're going around trying to find some more rules to live by. Rule keeping didn't work. We now have the Spirit who authored the rules. And he said, instead of me giving you more tablets, I'm going to give you myself, and I'm going to come in, and I'm going to lead and guide you, and I'm going to take away your old want-tos and give you new want-tos, and you'll stay up at night trying to figure out why is it that I don't want to do what I used to want to do, because the Holy Ghost is doing a work on the inside of you. But some of you are here tonight, would have not normally been here tonight, but the Holy Ghost is doing a work on the inside of you. Some of you would have been at a club somewhere getting ready to get your bottle out and do what you need to do. Now, now I'm not saying you ain't going to do that after we dismiss, but I'm just saying... <laughs> We're just glad to have you here from the, for the beginning, from, for the prelude. But I'm telling you under this new covenant, there's some new wine, praise God. And if you drink of this new wine, you'll never thirst again, praise the Lord. And it's by the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to tell you no more rules. I'm not going to give you no more rules. I'm not, we're not going to sit about telling you what's right or wrong. I'm telling you there's a Holy Spirit that wants to live on the inside of you, that wants to lead and guide you. You are now sons. You depend on the Holy Spirit. Quick, that's why everybody's so confused right now. Well, how come God did this? Why did God let that happen? Who God did that? And who did, did that? Why did God do that? And I don't think I want to go to church no more because I'm confused and I don't know why God did what he did and I don't understand nothing because you're supposed to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Quit trying to figure the Bible out and get, get in the Holy Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will show you what you need to know. He'll show you every scripture. He'll show you the job you need to go to. He'll show you who, who you need to marry and who you need to let go of. He will show you, hallelujah, things to come. He is your guide. He is your unseen partner. He has been given to sons. Servants don't have this privilege. Sons do. Hallelujah. The spirit of sonship brings with it a sense that we are right with God. But the spirit of a slave brings with it the sense that we need to perform to earn the right to be in God's presence. I'm a son. I'm right with God. Even when I'm wrong, I'm right with God. See, my children are going to be my children. I don't care what they do. They're still going to be my children. It ain't like they can divorce me and go find another daddy. <laughs> they can go get a, a, a pretend daddy, but they can't. He ain't never going to be the real one. They, 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 the only DNA that they can claim is their DNA is this DNA. Yeah. That's right. 
Somebody said, well, well they crazy. Yeah, but they, they, they crazy tail belong to me. <laughs> Quit looking for reasons to get rid of them and just stay in there and, and, and act like a son and say, Lord, Lord, I need you right now. I don't know what to do. I done made some mistakes. I don't know how to correct them, but you are my father. Now, in the name of Jesus, I declare over my children because I am a son that my children are taught of the Lord and great is the peace of my children. My children want to praise God. My children love to praise God. They will do what you've called them to do and they shall not fail in doing it. Now, I'm the redeemed of the Lord, and whatever I say is so. That's what you do because you are sons of God. Under the law, God was judge. Under grace, God is father. As sons, we don't, we don't need to fear judgment from God. Man, before I knew about grace, every time the earth shook, I thought judgment day was coming. <laughs> every time lightning hit, uh-oh, there you go. <laughs> I don't need to fear that. Somebody said, what happens to sons at the end of all this? It's a party time. There you go. I used to think they had a real, real in heaven. And at the end of time, we're going to get in line and God's going to say next. And then they were going to call me next and they were going to play the real, real. And yeah, all creation, we're going to see all my duty. <laughs> and God was just going to sit up there. And, 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 and me and God got talking about that one time. I said, well, Lord, what is that? He said, well, it, 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 it. It's in the sea. I said, what you mean it's in the sea? He said, don't you remember that when you got born again, I told you I was going to take your sins and cast them as far as the east is from the west and cast them in the sea of forgetfulness, or, and, and I ain't going to remember it no more? Ain't no real or reals in heaven with all your dirty laundry. <laughs> all your dirty laundry was put on the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This is not a relationship based on fear, but it's in the privilege and the freedom to call him daddy. I shared with you yesterday morning, our sonship comes from three things. Identity, our sense of identity, our sense of acceptance, and our sense of approval. That's what happens when you receive your sonship. Identity, I know who I am. Acceptance, he's received me as his son. Approval, he approves of me. Now these three bring a true sense of belonging. These are basic human needs that every human needs to have and if you don't get it in God, you spend all your life trying to find it in somebody. And sometimes you find it in the wrong person. How come I keep marrying this same old thug-like person? Because of your, your low self-esteem. Your low self-esteem still drawing that same old sorry Negro that don't want to do nothing but lay around and, and, and drink your milk because, I mean, he get it for free. So why is he going to marry a cow that he can milk for free? Moo. <laughs> but the day you start caring enough about yourself because you now have your approval in God and your identity in God, you're not just going to take any little curly head something that come your way. You're going to now value yourself enough to know that I value myself more than to let you come into my life and mess me up, stress me out, and make me miserable. I'm a diamond, baby. You better get a shovel and start digging. I'm not just rocks on top of the surface. I'm a Rolls Royce. You don't get to test drive me, baby. I, <laughs> you don't get to test drive me. 
You want this, you got to work for it. You got to, you got to wait for it. You got to, you got to do the right thing for it. Did you, this said, did you ain't getting it. Just stop while I'm ahead. What you see of your physical self is not the real you. It's only a covering. Did you know you have the divine nature of God inside you? God has given you power and authority over the enemy, and now it's time to use it. You're gonna dare look at a circumstance, and instead of letting it master you, you'll remind yourself, wait a minute, you don't control me. I control you. Yeah. To go on the front porch and announce to that creation, listen here, I don't know if you got the memo, but I have been given dominion and authority in the name of Jesus. So now in Jesus' name, I command you right now to cease right now in your movement. Not a bit of my house will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Get the Power of Sonship two message series for a love gift of $12.95 or more. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. There's going to be something that's going to be benefiting me, that's happening in the body of Christ. I want to be present. And in all honesty, my faith has gone from like here, and I thought I had faith, to like, I can't, I can't explain how far it's gone. Oh, it's time. They got to hear this. They got to hear this word of grace. And when he stepped into the grace message, it just, it just, it, it totally changed our life. And uh, that's why we couldn't wait to get here. It's always an awesome experience to be in the presence of the Word and others who are just as excited as you are. Your heart should be light as air after you leave this conference and so far it's like I said it's day one. I'm already leaving with a happy heart. Register today at CreflodollarMinistries.org or call or text the numbers listed on the screen. We can't wait to see you at Grace Life 2019. There is a purpose for your life and you are meant to do great things. The key to reaching your destiny is to grow in your understanding of God's grace. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's Word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar. For one low monthly subscription, you'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. In as little as 15 minutes a day, you can study God's Word, be encouraged, and learn how to study the Bible, how to overcome fear, how to better your relationships, and so much more. And the best news, it's free for 30 days. Now is the time for you to take control of your life and join Grace Life Academy. Text GLA to 51555 to get started right now, or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. 